Welcome, everyone. I'm Charles Stott, co-president of the Nantucket Civic League. Today, local office holders, former and current, will share their own personal experiences in holding an elected or appointed position. Co-president Peter Morrison and NCTV 18 staff have collaborated to produce brief YouTube videos. We'll use these videos to further our central aim to inform all Nantucket residents of the opportunities to serve as a town committee or board member. Today, you'll see excerpts from these videos as your fellow residents share personal experiences and reflect on opportunities open to everyone to volunteer for a committee appointment or to run for elected office. And to our viewers, please help us to get the word out. We're calling all candidates. You're gonna see some terrific excerpts from these videos that we've created that are going to be uh, posted for the public along with our forum today uh, as an ongoing resource for all members of our community to consult uh, whenever they want on demand late at night after a long day of work to help motivate them to consider serving either as volunteers on town committees or possibly uh, running as candidate for office. How do we activate civic participation across this extraordinary mosaic of communities who've made Nantucket home? So we will go ahead and slide into a, a video, a quick video excerpt from uh, Maria Partida, who also is a very prominent community member and uh, lifelong volunteer on our island. When I started volunteering, I remember getting, getting involved with the school. That was my first um, step. If I have the way to do it, I will do it. Getting to know um, wonderful people, because the people that serve on the different committees here on island are just wonderful. They're great. Their hearts, it's what really amazed me. They're willing to help. They're willing to serve. They're willing to find solutions for the different issues here, you know, with the community. So Maria pointed out some, some great, great pointers in that. And, and the biggest takeaway I get from that is that Nantucket is such an eclectic island. If there is a passion that you have within you, you can find an organization that's working towards that. And, and so Maria, I would love to hear um, just a little bit more about your call to action in volunteering on the island a bit. Okay, so thank you for the invitation, Peter. Uh, I've always felt very welcome here on the island. So maybe that's what really helped me feel confident on trying it. <laughs> on really taking action. So my name is Maria Partida. I'm a mother of three Nantucket natives. I've been here since 2000, 22 years ago. Oh my gosh. Yes, I do call Nantucket home. If you live on Nantucket, that also comes with the responsibility of getting involved in civil matters. So remember, if you don't take actions, others will do for you. And the results could not be the correct ones for you or for me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the invitation. It comes from my heart. We're gonna go to Reverend Richard live. I'm delighted to be part of this. Um, civil engagement has been um, no small part of my ministry in communities where I have served. We uh, did a test at First Congregational Church while I was there in 19, uh, late 1980s. Um, and we did it right during worship. I asked people to answer a question, how many committees of the town are you on? And what do they do? Because I believe it brings honor to God uh, and brings honor to the idea of Christian citizenship uh, 
for people to be engaged. We have been uh, devoted and we have had devoted people uh, historically who have stepped in, who've been appointed and elected to positions, various, various positions. And I'm delighted that many of them were actually people in our religious organizations felt an ethic or a responsibility to be engaged. I was delighted. Uh, the survey that we did uh, of our congregation to find out how many people we had in elected or appointed offices just blew my mind because there were almost 70% of our active membership in the church who were volunteering on community councils, boards, and committees. Nothing can make, <laughs> nothing can make a minister happy, happier than that. So we are actually going to go ahead and turn to uh, Josh Balling, who's here joining us. Josh is a managing, managing editor of the Inquirer and Mirror. Thanks, Shanta. Uh, the Inquirer and Mirror welcomes any opportunity to participate in initiatives like these that encourage greater participation in local government. Uh, outside of those organizations themselves, we're probably in one of the better positions to really observe uh, what happens at uh, all levels of town government, given how much effort we put into covering them. Um, and it's been come pretty clear over the last decade or two that Nantucket has really become a truly diverse community, one of the most diverse in the state. And that's clearly indicated in our schools, uh, in our workforce, but right now, not necessarily in public office. And with diversity of population comes diversity of viewpoint. The more viewpoints that are considered, the better decisions can be made. And the best government is one that represents all its people, not jo just those who shout the loudest or have the most time to serve. Uh, it's often on these boards and committees, uh, appointed especially, and advisory groups, where the groundwork is laid for those policies that drive how the town moves forward. And, and best prepares for change. And there's a lot of change right now. Seeking appointment to local boards, committees, and commissions is an excellent way to get started, to explore public service, and most importantly, to let your voice be heard, to represent your interests, the interests of your neighbors, the interests of your community, and provide a perspective that might be missing. We try to get information out on a variety of platforms, including the town's social media, which include Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. There's a lot of information on our website. Once a month, there's a town manager e-newsletter. I'm sure everybody here subscribes to it, but if, on the off chance that you don't, please go to the town website and click to subscribe. Uh, NCTV has been very helpful to us, and those videos that, that we're seeing a little bit of are fantastic. Thank you all, Civic League and NCTV for doing that. And of course, the newspaper um, is very much in the forefront of uh, committee vacancies and with the form of ads and notices. Erica is going to take us through the details. Erica is also a really good resource, along with Maureen Coleman in my office, for people who have questions about committee issues, open meeting law questions, conflict of interest questions, things of that nature. So thank you so much for having us. And hopefully this gives people a little bit more of the technical detail about the committee appointment side of things. Erica. Thank you so much. And thank you for um, asking me to be a part of this really wonderful session today. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I as well worked um, with a scholarship committee with the Nantucket Anglers Club for many years. And when I became, when I first um, came on board working for the town, um, there were a lot of vacancies on the scholarship committee. And so in 2009, I applied to fill a vacancy and I ended up serving for eight years on that committee. And it was really fulfilling um, to help these kids who grew up on Nantucket and one of the kids that received numerous scholarships is now a select person. So that's um, interesting to see it come for full circle like that. We actually have um, roughly 30 appointed committees within the town of Nantucket. We try to just give really everyone a chance to um, have enough time to get their applications in. We did institute a new volunteer talent bank last year, which has been, um, I think, really well received. Um, you can find it. it. If you go to the town's website, 
and go to government, there's a pull down in boards, committees, commissions. And this page is filled with a lot of information. You can see the links for the different boards, committees, com councils, uh, commissions, trusts, and work groups. And then there's a tab here for volunteer talent bank. And it's just an opportunity for somebody to put their name in for something ahead of the timeline. And then we will look at those people who have put their names in in the talent bank for a period of two years. I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Oh, and I did wanna say um, about the talent bank, I actually just received a talent bank submission yesterday and you know we were talking, somebody was talking earlier about you know our diverse, diverseness in our community and how people come from all different countries. And I just got a talent bank application yesterday from somebody from Brazil. They've been here for six months and they are really anxious to get involved in the community. So I love when we see applications like that. Once a committee member is appointed through Erica's office, they come to our office, the town clerk's office right across the hall and simply get sworn in as a committee member. They don't need an appointment for that. So I'd like to talk a little bit about elected positions. If you would like to run for elected office, you simply have to be a registered voter of the town of Nantucket. And this year you have to get 53 signatures of other registered voters of the town. Anyone out there is interested in any elected position and has any questions about how to go forward, absolutely they can feel free to email me. Uh, all our contact information for the town clerk is on the webpage, call our office. Um, and as Erica was pointing out, there's detailed positions about uh, detailed information, excuse me, about all of these boards on the web page. Turning now to our panel. Our first panelist is Brooke Moore, the chair of the Council for Human Services. Brooke also serves as vice chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Before going live to Brooke, however, we'd like to share a very brief excerpt from the video that she recorded. It's really fun and it's really interesting to see how government works. And more importantly, on Nantucket, one has the opportunity to affect change in a way that, that you wouldn't have in a larger community. You really can change things. For someone who's not ready yet, just going to meetings and maybe practicing making comments in the public comment portion. There's a public comment portion in every meeting. And if you have something you want to talk about, um, or they've, there's a discussion of something of interest to you and you have a suggestion or an opinion that practicing by participating as a public member in public meetings is, is a really easy way to get your toe in the water. And that is the true, um, amazing thing about how it all works. We're here, we're part of it. We see things that um, matter to us, whether it's signage or potholes or uh, equity or um, how the dump operates or the lack of affordable housing. The point is that anything that you notice that means something to you, there's an opportunity to voice that. And that, as I, in my video, uh, started out with just knowing what committee is responsible for the thing that that you that you want to pay attention to and finding out who those members are and talking to them or going to a meeting and asking to speak in public comment when Nancy was talking about swearing in my heart jumped a minute there's like this real solemnity to that moment where you raise your right hand and get sworn in to public office that I didn't really get until the first time I did it it was like wow I'm serving my community and this has significance and it's a huge responsibility and yet it's not that hard and i just want to encourage members of our diverse community that your voice matters you don't have to be an american citizen to serve on our our committees so as new immigrants um, folks are welcome to apply i think that's important to know um, and that we want to hear your voice our next panelist is um, Vanessa Rendero, who sits with Brooke on the Council for Human Services. Um, but before we uh, hear from Vanessa personally, 
let's take a few seconds uh, to look at an excerpt of her uh, video. My name is Vanessa Rendero. I've been living in Nantucket for about 12 years. I'm a you know, full-time resident, and I'm very happy to be part of Nantucket community. I'm Brazilian, and so I'm, I'm from Amazon rainforest area. Um, I'm from the capital city called Belém. And uh, by that time, I was working as an English and Portuguese teacher. I'm a high and middle school teacher in Brazil. So, um, and then I decided on coming here to join my husband. So, and I've been here since then. I've been translating um, for many organizations on island. And then a uh, few months later, I, I decided on register my um, translation company called The Translator's House. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I can start by saying that it was a joy and um, a pleasure to serve um, the local community. And the way that I did, um, on the Council for Human Services. So um, by that time, back in 20, uh, 2020, um, actually I didn't know that I, that I had a call to action in me. So this, um, you know, this action was, um, how can I say, was activate when I, when I got an invitation um, from Book Brookmore. And I said, well, Council for Human Services, so how does it work? I had never had this experience, even my country. So, and I had here, so you, you guys, like the town uh, welcomed, they, they welcome new people. We can bring our, you know, our thoughts to the table and, and everybody listen to you. So it's, uh, you know, to me, to be part of the Council for Human Services was so important because I wasn't there just to, you know, sitting down and, and listen to everyone. No, we, we have, we, we participate. So, um, you know, our thoughts uh, are considerate. To be part of, a, you know, of a, a committee um, helps the town to understand the local community more, you know, to uh, to work towards um, find solution to the community needs. So, so yeah. So what I would say is that um, I invite everyone for the immigrant community to join the town. So we need to be voiced. You know, we have to be heard somehow. So this is a great opportunity, you know, to join the town and help our community more. I think some of the challenges that people may sort of hesitate from running, um, and I hear this from people who call me and ask if I can have a cup of coffee or can I have a telephone call just to talk about what it's like on school committee, is I think the fear number one of running a campaign and feeling like they wouldn't necessarily know how to do, uh, how to actually run a, a, a campaign. And another one is really being concerned about how much time it would take. And of course, in any committee, um, there is going to be that learning curve and that it is going to be as long as you're willing to put in the time. I'm still learning, but it takes about a year or so. And again, I think this is an example of what we're trying to change is that we want to see people run and put their, their name in the hat to be considered for a position. In order to campaign, I don't think you need to have a full operation um, to do it. I did not, again, I was really starting very fresh and with very little experience, but you will find that there are people on the island that you don't know at all. They find out that you're running and they, they just want to support you.